this evening's uh, agenda for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we have uh, four cases on the agenda for this evening. Uh, before we get started, um, one of our cases two weeks ago um, was at 168 Walnut Street, Reading, Mass. Uh, that, that was presented uh, to the office and stamped in. Um, unfortunately, it was an uh, edit on the street address. Um, the town clerk thought that the town council should be involved as we sent or were about to send them out. So, consequently, um, we stamped in the corrected 168 Walnut Street and sent, it, sent them out uh, to all the abundance again. So that's just a clerical issue that we're taking care of. That being done. Um, first case on the agenda. Uh, case number 19-11. Uh, do we have the petitioners present this evening? 7981 Salem Street. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come in and take a proceed and let me go through the process. Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall 16 Little Street, Running Mass on Wednesday, June the 19th at 7 p.m. On the application of Brian Powery, HCR construction pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 48, Section 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaws Section 732 and 7.8 to remove the existing two family dwelling and construct a new two family dwelling on the property located at 79 to 81 Salem Street, Reading Mass. Um, Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following Board of Selectmen, Police Department, and we can change that. Second time I've done that. The Select Board, the Police Department, the Building Department, the Health Department, the Engineering Division, the Town Clerk, the Fire Department. Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as was the Planning Board of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Uh, testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you wish to speak this evening, uh, please, whether you're the applicant or not, if you wish to speak this, this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. Uh, it doesn't hurt, so if you think you may wish to speak, stand and raise your right hand or I, I can't. Thank you. I'm Scott Rumley from HC. <coughs> I am part of the leader's partner, one of the partners on 7981 Salem Street. Okay. Um, do you swear that the testimony given before the board this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? In case I do. I do. Okay. You are the managing partner of the individuals that do own the property, correct? Um, I turn it over to you. You tell the board what you're looking for and we'll go through it. So what we have here is a non-conforming lot. Um, it's a 14,000 square foot lot. And we're looking to rip down the existing two family that's there. The existing one is on the left side of the house. It is nine foot six inches from the lot line top. Um, there is two driveways cut in, left side of the house facing it right side as well. Um, the new house, we, we, we would conform to everything except that same left side. Uh, we would make it better, uh, pushing the back to 14.2, and the front corner would be at 13.6, which the 9.6 is there. So we're trying to make it better. Uh, the right side will be at 15.1 on one and 17.8 at the front. The reason why we're keeping it mostly to the left is the grade changes. So as we come this way, it's easier with the, um, the stormwater management that we did to keep all the water and keep the neighbor's driveway to the right where it is exactly and flow down around to 
to the back where we're hoping to have our driveways come around to the back where they go now. Um, we went through historic, uh, it was just a basic historic, but we had a couple meetings with them to change the front style of the house to make them happy to get us to uh, this point. Uh, we met with the building inspector or the building commissioner. Uh, he wrote you a letter, and the letter is a denial uh, without him here this evening. Uh, we do have something from the building commissioner this evening. Um, the Honorable Board, in my absence, please attend the attached comments for each of the cases. Um, with, re with regards to the above mentioned properties, and he has a, a statement on each one of them. And I'll read the one that's in this particular one. Uh, this is to you, Brian Powley. Um, the building permit application to demolish the existing two family structure of an existing non conforming lot is hereby denied. A special permit was <coughs> from section 7.8 and, and or 7.3.2 is required. 7.8 is a voluntary demolition and reconstruction. Any reconstruction following voluntary demolition or of a non-conforming structure shall meet the following requirements. A, single or two-family dwelling is that non-conforming, that is non-conforming only with respect to the lot size and or frontage may be voluntarily removed or demolished and replaced by a new single one or two-family dwelling. In the event, B, the proposed reconstruction would cause structure to a, exceed the lot coverage of the original non-conforming building or structure, or B, cause the building or structure to be located on another, on other than the original footprint that the build inspector may issue a building permit if the proposed reconstruction will not intend, extend the non-conformity or create a new non-conformity and see the non-conforming building or structure that is accessory or single or two-family dwelling may, de may be demolished and the new accessory building or structure may be built in the same footprint if the new accessory structure does not exceed the height and size limitations for accessory structures in, the effect, in effect at the time the structure is rebuilt. 7.32 those alterations for a single, which is the other article that um, the denial was based on, and which you want to come before this board for. Uh, 7.32, for those alterations of a single or two-family dwelling not eligible for a building permit pursuant to 7.3, the Zoning Board of Appeals may grant a special permit to reconstruct, extend, alter, or structurally change a non-conforming building or structure upon finding that such reconstruction, extension, alteration, or structures, structural change shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming building or structure. So you have quickly outlined um, your, cons your proposal. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And the later one, which was actually done um, the board members, with regards to the above mentioned hearing, I offer the following information to propose. Rebuild appears to meet the intent of the bylaws. So, um, we will do what we normally do. We'll go around the board and see if there is any questions for the applicant. Um, and then we'll start with that. We don't have any questions right now. Okay. Sorry? What I want to have is clarification. I see where the existing driveways are, mm -hmm. and now you're going to have garages on the back side of the new structure. Correct. What's the access for that? Is it along the same size? So each driveway comes, so the curb cuts are staying the same. Both driveways will come around to the come back, around. and then there's going to be garage unders in the back. Okay. If you like that. So the question I have. Okay. Robert? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, John. Uh, went down and took a look at the property and uh, also uh, looking at the plot plan there submitted. It's, uh, we're dealing with a non-conforming lot here uh, due to uh, 
less than required lot area, less than required lot frontage. Uh, questions I had circa 1820 or so, the original house was built on that lot, right? Uh, it looks like a lot of rehab has been done to it. Is it that vinyl siding on it? Yeah, it, does. it, it looked it, yeah. Uh, question I had, number, number one, did, did you do any uh, touch base with the historical uh, society? Yes, though? I did. I, uh, I had three meetings, had an on-site meeting with them, and uh, instead of the six-month demo delay, we were able to come in with the new plan and get approval based on, on that new plan. They just wanted the front more cut up, more, more, more crazy. But again, it, it didn't come down to wood or anything like that. Because right. After the walkthrough, there is nothing in that house that physically, maybe some floorboards in the basement that was showing the time frame, but there was nothing else. Everything else had been stripped off. And even on the outside below the siding as well, it's just a, it's almost right. like a, a board behind the vinyl. Yeah, yeah. So the windows on. Uh, original, they figured, they, I think the last permit they said might have been in the 60s. Um, so those windows were coming from then. So we went through the whole house with them up and down, and uh, they were fully satisfied. Okay, thank you. Yeah, looking at it myself, uh, I, I, I would, I, quick glance when I went down there, and I said, well, this is, you know, from uh, 40s or 50s or something. I was surprised when I saw how old it was. So obviously a lot of, Rehab has been done to it over the years and stuff, and uh, and it is a one-story structure, right? Two stories. There is, is it? Yes, there is. The okay. on the second floor. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking. You know, I saw it now. I'm, I'm looking at the assessor's plan and the mat and the uh, photo on that. Uh, I didn't have any so Okay. <laughs> It, it's like a saw box or something? It looks... Uh, it's a cape style. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's one and a half stories then. Exactly. Unless you go around... Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 There's four or five pictures there if you want to take a look. Okay. That's a say. I, when I, it looked like it was pretty much overgrown in front, too. Yeah. 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 We're pulling it back. So the hose on the front now is 13 feet from the curb. Cut. We're going to end up at 23 yeah. feet. Okay. Uh, did, did you have to uh, do any con conservation commission? No. No, nope, we're outside the hundred. Uh, if you look on the plot plan, though, he did just mark a no touch zone. Yeah, I thought I saw that something. Drainage, yeah. culvert that's back there. It's that concrete water that goes from, uh, I would say, the park <coughs> going between mm -hmm. all those streets out back. Okay. Well, we are well away from that. Um, not, not disturbing anything, but yeah. in that area, we just planning on grassing it. That's that's all we were doing. Okay, uh, it is a uh, structure that's still going to be non-conforming, the proposed structure, though you have improved, you might say, the non-conformity that existed prior to it, it uh, on that one. And, uh, and then after looking at things, I, I could recommend uh, that uh, a special permit be issued. Uh, it doesn't appear uh, that the it would be more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's there already. And it's, uh, there is an improvement in regards to the uh, nonconformity uh, that's there on the easterly side, I believe it is. Yeah, well, uh, you not going to think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't make any difference. Anyway, the side that's already uh, uh, there's no conformity. Yeah, you're improving that. Okay, I'm looking at that. Yeah, yeah, the easterly side it is. Okay. Looking at your architectural pictures of uh, renderings, though, and I believe you're keeping it to the required height, below the required height, right? Correct. We meet everything at But it is going to be substantially higher <coughs> roof ridge than what's there now. Correct. Yeah, but uh, everything does meet today's uh, zoning requirements and bylaws on that. Like everything. Yeah, the only thing we're missing is that left side lot line. Yeah. Uh, we could have fit it in that box. It's just we tried twisting it sideways, and then it would look, compared to the house next to us and that house, just, just keeping it in line with the street really keeps it in line. With okay. And like I said, if you did walk at the driveway to the right, that neighbor's driveway is significantly lower. Um, so, in order to try and keep it dressed up, mm -hmm. so it all fits. Yeah. 
it's tight and looks good at the end. Um, that's why it works that way and keeping it to the left. You, are you keeping, let's see, uh, there's no garages uh, associated with this structure at all. It's all going to be driveway parking? The new house has one car garage in the back. In the back. Right, so okay. Yeah, the yeah. big plan, the drain, the... I could recall. I'd like to see that. Okay. Uh, six, six. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, garage, I mean, it's going to be a garage. Yeah. You know. Right. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh... That's about all I have for questions, uh, and as I say, I think I can support this. It uh, appears to meet the requirements of the bylaw, uh, 7.3.2, uh, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in regards to uh, not building it, you know, in the exact same footprint and everything. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I basically concur. I think you're within the law coverage. You're keeping all the setbacks and improving yeah. some, especially the front. Um, I think it's in line with the neighborhood character, so I support it. No, I don't see any objections. I see on the grading utility plan where the retention is, how the lot, the driveway is laid out. Um, I'm sure that at the end of the day, on the right side, that curb is going to be more parallel to the actual lot line. Otherwise, the car is going to constantly run up over it. Her driveway kind of is also, so we're going to try and, you know, obviously work with what, what she has existing on. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be some working out in the field. That's the only thing I could see that you just want to be aware of. But uh, otherwise, I think that this is an appropriate move to bring down the old building, unfortunately, however old it is, and, and reestablish the land to more equitable use. Okay. Um, I only had a couple of questions. Um, First, conservation um, will appear before them. They said it was okay after meeting with them. Did they give you a letter of conformity or sign I mean, off or something? So we didn't we didn't have to meet with them at all because it's outside the hundred foot. So I met with him on site, but I don't need to follow oh, up. Huh? He's still Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I wanted both of them. Yeah. Conservation and then historic. Uh, there sorry, is, yes, there is a signed letter from the historic board that everything, I don't have that with me today, but yes. That you make sure that that gets into so um, was the historic okay. demo board, right? There's two, you guys have two different boards in town. One is the historic commission and the other one is demo. So, yeah. And um, you said that you, you did talk to conservation, and conservation <coughs> said you're outside the 100 foot right. setback. Um, okay. I mean, it appears that you've notated that on the. Um, it's on the drainage plan, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, we're basically doing a finding this evening, too. Um, and it's no more detrimental than what is existing there to the neighborhood this evening. So that's actually what we're going to uh, be voting on. Um, that's all the cons c questions that I have right now. <coughs> Do you want to comment this? Okay. <laughs> you have any member of the board um, has taken the oath and is now sitting. Um, we have a five member board. So this evening we will have Eric, Cy, myself, Bob, and Nick voting. Um, that'll be the five members voting. Um, before we move on, um, I have to open it up to the public uh, for public comment. So I first of all open it up. Do I have anybody from the public here who wishes to speak on this particular petition? Seeing nobody standing and wishing to be recognized, I'm going to close the subject matter of the public hearing for this evening. So um, I'll move on to now uh, making a decision here. Um, we are making a finding, um, and in doing so, um, we will be accepting what has been put before us, um, and the finding would be that it's no more detrimental than what is there existing at present. Do I have in, an individual who... Uh, He's looking for a special permit, right? Special permit, yes, but 
we also make, have to make a finding, I think, that it is no more detrimental as part of 732. Well, I think, okay. Mm -hmm. that, I believe that's part of the requirement of what, 7.8? 7 uh, 7.3? 7 well, it was advertised. Whatever. Yeah, I, I, bought, I thought that was uh, part of the voluntary demolition, 7.8, voluntary demolition. Yep. The show me from the show of the, uh, and then let's see for those that are going to yeah. so on a, fi on a finding yeah you're right that the century uh, reconstruction center shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood so this we're going to do the finding first on seven three finding. two yeah. and then moving a special permit under seven um, yeah. seven point eight so yep. do I have anybody who wishes to Make a motion. I'll do it, John. Okay. Thank you, Mary. I move uh, to make a finding that the petitioner's uh, HCR construction uh, that the work proposed to reconstruct, extend, alter, or structurally change the non-conforming building or structure uh, is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood in, than the existing non-conforming building or structure on site. <clears throat> I further move to approve the petitioner's request for a special permit under 7.8 to remove the existing two-family dwelling and construct a new two-family dwelling at the property located at 7981 Salem Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, as depicted on a certified plot plan uh, prepared by Dresser Williams and May Incorporated, uh, 520, I'm sorry, 572 Boston Road in Barricka, Mass, and stamped by Francis J. McDonald, uh, professional land surveyor. And as further reflected in a grading and utility plan, also prepared by Dresser Williams and May, and stamped by Stephen Dresser, professional, uh, sorry, registered professional engineer, and as further depicted on architectural renderings, uh, prepared by David Capaldo, uh, architect, East Taunton, Massachusetts, uh, noted as drawing numbers A1 through A11. I will also condition the special permit on the following. <coughs> One, the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction, proposed foundation plans, prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. The petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And the petitioner shall submit as-built plans to the building inspector showing the completed construction immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. There are seconds of the motion. Second. <coughs> seconds. Any further comments? Any further comments? All those in favor? Five zero zero. Uh, it's granted. It will be a two-week period that the board has to be up, submitted to the town clerk. After that, there will be a 20-day appeal period. And if that is, um, which I'm sure will, um, you can come in and pick up your permit. You can come in and talk to the building commissioner after you receive the, de the decision. He may allow you to start the process. That's between you and he. Uh, let me uh, stamp a set of plans for you. Anybody in the set? I think this put a plan in there. Uh, and then I think there was also uh, the engineering one too, right? Yep. <clears throat>
Okay, these are yours. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, guys. Good night. Apologize for the paperwork. Uh, next case before us is um, case number. 19-12, uh, 29 Holly Street. Okay. Uh, let me read again the answers. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall 16 Old Street for the Mass on Wednesday, June 19th, 11 p.m. on the application of summary. Summary, right. yes. All right. um, and Christos Reyes, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 9, for special permit, uh, zoning bylaws, uh, Section 7.3.2, 5.4.7, and a table of conventional controls, 532, to construct an accessory apartment to the existing single family dwelling at the property located at 29 Holly Road. Assessor's Map 7, Lot 235, Reading, Massachusetts. <coughs> Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the following. Selectman, Board of, Select Board, <laughs> uh, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Police Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Building and Engineering, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Board of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Wilmington, and Woodward. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you think you may wish to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. And it doesn't, again, it does not hurt, and if you think you wish to speak at all tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. Uh, testimony given before this board, uh, do you swear the testimony given before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the answer is you do. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn this over to you. I'll do the same as I did the last time, I guess. I'll let you make your presentation, and I'll read you the, the denial that you already have been given by the building right. commissioner anyway. So right. go ahead. Um, so we moved here about six years ago. Um, we love the house, we love the street. About two years ago, my, my mom was forced to sell their home and moved in with us in some unforeseen circumstances. Um, and we've made the best of our, our space that we have there, but we'd like to make a little more space so that they can have uh, some uh, independence and we can be there to help them. Um, so they don't have all the uh, things that come along with home ownership. Um, so we built, um, we're taking advantage of the opportunity to add a small little addition, a little office for ourselves in between, it's a sort of a connector room, um, and above it will be a deck off of our, our master bedroom. Um, beyond that, um, due to mobility issues, that was really the best uh, solution because since it's a split, we can go down the garage and in without any steps. Um, other than that, we'd have to go up and have an elevator or some sort of other solution. 
Um, so we've given the, the split. We decided to do that, um, sort of make it as unobtrusive as possible, um, and sort of should uh, sort of uh, not alter the uh, characteristics of the you know, the house and the neighborhood as little as possible. Um, as you know, um, there are a number in a uh, number of requirements for accessory apartments. Um, you have not gone over that yet, and before you do that, um, a letter from the building commissioner. Uh, please be advised that your permit application to construct a new 16 by 18 one-story office addition and a 30 by 24 one-story accessory apartment addition uh, to existing non-conforming lot, lot area and lot coverage which will increase footprint, extend, alter, structurally change has been denied. Uh, and he goes over those requirements in 7.2. So I'm going to ask you um, if uh, you want to address that before the board, uh, those requirements. It fulfills all requirements. Setbacks. Well, um, um, OK. I had difficulty with it because there was really no calculations, per, actually, except for the bottom page of uh, one of the sections there. Uh, so, I'm, in, in your your uh, certified plot plan and in your architectural running, the one in the, the dimensions that I really saw either, but that's beside the point. Okay. So, I'll. If you think that you meet all those requirements, I'll just start the other end this evening. So I'll go to Kyle and see what his comments or questions might be before you. Um, <clears throat> knowing that your father is now, I guess, in a chair, mm -hmm. um, was there an issue with how you intend to get him into the house without use of a ramp? Because I noticed that the design is all chairs, the stairs. Uh, well, because it's a split level, that's just to have an, ex an extra entrance and exit, a private entrance for themselves, and from the office out into what will be an, a patio in, in the future, sort of in that corner. But if they go through the garage, since it's a split, it's, there are no steps. So you call in the garage, and it's straight ahead and it'll be on that same level. Right. right. Floor lines Below up. ground. So it'll be about three feet below grade. The same level as the existing lower level of the square. And so that you go through here through the office? Yes, through the office. As a way of then getting in straight through. Straight through without any steps. Yeah. yeah. So your office becomes kind of a breezeway. Correct, yeah. Uh, it's just an extra space. And the grade, and, uh, and particularly, I guess, just the setback was such that you couldn't get a straight ramp from the front of the house on the side um, to well, the entrance? Well, it's, since it's a split, I, we have some water issues as well, and I just thought that a long ramp would just create a problem, um, an additional problem, since we already have an access without any steps. And yeah, I don't have knowledge enough of the, uh, the the terrain that you're navigating there, but uh, just thinking long term yeah. for the accessibility uh, and stuff. If that was something that was considered, I, I see the setback as an issue. Um, just want to know if you were aware of and thinking of options to that end. Yeah. In terms of the overall fit of the building, I, I don't have any further questions in regard to proposed. Okay. So uh, I'll just add on to that. So, you know, really on the architectural drawings, I see that basically you met one of the performance standards. It appears to me you maintain the appearance of a single family home. So I'm okay with that. Uh, it also appears that you, to, to me, met the rest of the performance standards. Um, a through K, basically. Um, and I do see on the plot plan, it says the proposed coverage is 20.4%, so you're under the 25%. Right. Yep. For me, it appears that you've met all the performance standards. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, John. <clears throat> Again, uh, this appears uh, to be a non-conforming lot, non-conforming uh, due to lot area 
and uh, bot frontage uh, on that. You're in the Z in in the S15 zone on that, and does not meet the 100 foot requirement for that or the 15,000 square feet. But it it has been built in its grandfathered based on you know when it was built, I believe, in 1970 or so. Yeah. And the existing structure does meet all all existing required setbacks. Uh, there. And your proposed structure appears to meet all the uh, setbacks uh, on that. Uh, so as it's laid out on the uh, plot plan, as shown on the uh, architectural renderings, uh, I don't have an issue with it. Uh, the the uh, only thing, and I, and I know you're, you're building an addition in the back, that's also an access, I guess. Uh, that will be an access to the apartment from the main house, right? Through there? Yes, correct. And, and that's, an, that's you're going to use that as office space, okay. and that'll be considered part of the principal house. It is, yeah. It'll sort of be my home office. Yeah. And then the apartment itself, or the, the addition for the accessory apartment, will measure the, uh, what, 29.8 feet long by 23 and a half feet wide. Uh, on that, so that, that's basically the dimensions for the accessory apartment uh, on that. Now, I, what I couldn't understand, John, is I, I didn't know what Mark was getting at in his letter in regards to you may want to grant a waiver mm -hmm. from subparagraph B of uh, the uh, bylaws there, uh, which which is you're talking a uh, uh, an apartment shall be. Uh, the lesser, I believe it is, of two figures, either a thousand square feet or one third of the gross floor area of the principal structure. And it appears to me that, yeah, well, it's, uh, he did mention the, the area there, what, uh, about 630 square feet for the accessory apartment? Is that what it is? I have seven oh, on seven, this. Seven. Uh, 701. 701. 701, yeah, 701, yes. Okay, 701 is that one. And it says, uh, yeah, okay, so this one is, the allowable 33% would require, would be 630 square feet. So you're right. going to be greater yeah, than but that, but under th under 1,000. Well, it'll be, it'll be less than a third with the office when the office is added. To and less than a third the with the office, office. Yes. once the office is added right. to it, I say. And it's you know. just a few feet extra. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I can. Okay, so that's 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 what I think, John. If we had those figures in front of us, you know, what what the principle is, what the gross floor okay. square footage is, what the proposed square footage is for the office, which is going to be just a one story. You mean these? Not these? These something different from that, or? No, it's, on the, it's on the architectural, architectural plan. Second or third page. A two one. Okay. Oh, yeah. And that's, yeah. yeah. So, three apartments, 700 square feet. It's a lot of paper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so to be honest with you, I, I didn't have an issue with it at all. It, it appeared to me that they had met all the requirements mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, for a accessory apartment. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, when I, when I read the building, Mark's memo on the thing, I, uh, it didn't bother me at all because, you know, when the, all the dust settles, you're going to have a, a structure with an office in it and an accessory apartment. And so I, I think I look at it from the standpoint of the addition is part of the new structure, and so you calculate that square footage based on that total. Mm -hmm space for the main house. So in that sense, I, I don't see a need for a waiver, and I see it fully compliant, okay? And I went through all the other criteria, uh, and I concluded that that was all compliant as well. So I, based on what you have together here, I am not having a problem with it. Do I have any issues? Okay. Uh, the building commissioner, um, with regards to this, offered the following suggestions. This is if he were here this evening. Um, so I usually save that until last. Um, 
With regards to the above mentioned hearing, I offer the following information. Proposed addition appears to meet the required lot line setbacks. Two, the proposed addition appear to meet lot coverage requirements. Um, on engineering page A2 1, it appears that the applicants have added the additional 213 square feet from the proposed office addition to the existing square footage of the principal home to bring the total up to 2,103 square feet. By doing this, they would have 701 square feet uh, for the accessory apartment. And then he, on number one, he says, when using the existing square footage, that is the existing house as it stands now, the allowable is 33% would be approximately 630 square feet. For the apartment, the board may wish to consider granting a waiver from the subparagraph B. And I'll tell you where that comes from. This whole thing about which came first, the chicken or the egg. You had an a, a existing structure uh, before you wish to put an accessory apartment in it that did, did not have sufficient to accept part B, which is the 600, the 700 in one, or in this case, 700 square feet. You added the structure, which you have the right to do. But we've gone back and forth on this, and I think it needs to be clarified later on by CPDC so that it's very clear to whomever's sitting the board uh, in the future uh, that you can put the two together to create that. And that's basically if we are not going to give you something from uh, a waiver from Part B of the uh, requirements, um, then we have to accept the fact that at this point this evening, um, uh, we're allowing you to melt the two together. I'm not a real supporter of that, but that doesn't mean that we can pass the board. So, uh, at this point, uh, the board has all spoken, asked questions that they wish to ask of you. Uh, is there anyone, I'm, over, I'm going to open it up to the public for input, so if you wish to speak, please stand. Uh, tell us uh, your uh, name and your uh, address, and then. Hi, my name's Kevin Jack. I'm in a butter at 51 Walnut Street. So I have a couple questions. One, can an accessory apartment be rented out based upon the zoning on Hall Road? Well, it doesn't, it's very specific as what the accessory apartment was um, put into the bylaw for. It was put in for family returning home, um, elderly parents, um, a, a disabled member of the family, where well, one would be in the apartment and the other would be in uh, the main house. It does say that one of the two living units must be occupied by the owner of the property. That's the only requirement at the present time. What you're asking for later on down the road is um, why I think CPDC needs to address this in the future uh, because technically it does not address that. So we don't talk about that because we're not an enforcement agent. We are just following what the zoning bylaws dictate and the zoning bylaws did not say anything about rental. Okay, because I mean, I'm obviously not concerned now, but down the road, Yes. And we, we do have a rental unit a couple doors down from us, and it's we've had a lot of problems with, with renters and police and everything. So that's my concern as an abutter, is that, you know, I'm sure these people are going to use it for what they're intended, but if, if they had to sell the house in six months and someone else came in, if they could rent it out, then I, I, I wouldn't be in favor of it as an abutter. Well, I would tell you that if there's issues, questions, you need to put something in writing. You need to give it to the uh, building commissioner, and the building commissioner has a 14-day time turnaround period to get back to you and let you know what the situation is on your particular, I won't say it's a complaint, but a, right. a concern. Right. Um, and right now, that's the only thing that I could tell you that uh, this board, the board has to do one of two things. Everybody felt I, I think that you meet the standard requirements for accessory apartment. The question is, uh, do we give you a waiver, um, which is difficult? Um, 
for part B is, is the building commissioner suggesting or do we give you um, what the board has done before and loop all the things together and allow you to move forward on it um, because I assume it will have a kitchen and bathroom and it has to room. it has to be a separate living yes. unit okay. and those standards says that it has to have it only two means of egress it has to have a driveway it has to have access not through a garage it has to have access separate access but not necessarily in the front so that it appears to be a two-family rather than a single-family. Right. Shared utility yeah. is it, it retains its look as correct. a single as family. A single family. And shared utilities, right? Yeah. And, utilities. and that's what, that's what um, the requirements are. So when the board looked at that, it looked at the architectural drawings as well as the uh, certified plot plan and looked at all of that to see if you met it. That's why I say to people, you know, if you're going to do that, you might want to go over each one so that you understand and the board understands and when they ask you a question, you can answer that. But it appears that we're, we've got to that point now. So um, we heard, can we hear you? Okay. But I would, I would follow up if you're concerned, if there's another piece of property, then you know what the process is. <laughs> Some people don't use that, unfortunately. You can use that. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else in the pub who wish to make a public statement? Yes. My name is Nancy Graham, and I'm on a butter across the street. And I have no problem with uh, what the Reese's are planning to do and support them. Mm -hmm. We have another house on the street with the same type of a, and that's never been an issue. Anyone else? Yes. Bill Vernon, 35 Holly Road, I live next door. Um, I've always had my mother, a place for my mother-in-law in our basement. There's never been any kind of a problem, except when went for an abatement, and they had a redo and a, a, sent somebody down to check it. And she wanted to know whether I, I uh, filed that for income on my property because she thought that was another apartment, but there was never any problem and I got the abatement and we were all set. So I think they'd be they're great neighbors and love to have them and certainly understand why they would want a separate place for their in-laws or their, their family. So please approve it. Okay. Thank you. Seeing or I don't see anybody else who wishes to be heard on the public section. If there is none, I'll close the subject matter of the public hearing and return to the board. Um, so the board will now make a decision on, on this particular request. Um, I don't know how the board wishes to move. Either we follow um, giving a waiver uh, or we move securing the, the two requests at the same time special permit um, for the office and then a second special permit for the accessory apartment if we do it that way i think we need to do it in that particular order my view is i don't think you need a whip that we're looking at the structure as it in finality will look and take the office into consideration when you're calculating the square footage. And I really, that's my opinion. I don't think you need a waiver. I don't know what anyone else thinks. I think that if you can build it by right, you should be able to, you know, include that in the calculation. It would be absurd to say, yeah, go build the office, then come back for the accessory apartment. <laughs> well, your point is, after you build it, come back for the accessory apartment. That's that's the kicker in this whole thing. Right. So I think it just seems like it creates an absurd uh, process for the applicant to go through. Yes. And if that's what they're going to build and that's what we're approving, then I, I think that, you know, we've typically done that, and I see no reason to deviate from that today. Okay. Well, 
I would agree with that uh, way of thinking. Okay. Same thing. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, they they could get a building permit issue for the office space without even coming to the board, and that could be built. Then they would come down, as you say, in the proper order and do that. But it, it doesn't make sense. It, I would assume, you know, the foundations are possibly going to be connected. I don't believe, will they be full foundations mm -hmm. underneath or it's not just, just like crawl space? Frost, frost, frost wall. Yeah, yeah, it's just a, three, a frost wall. Like a three-foot okay. wall. Yeah. Just a frost wall, yeah. So it'll be no full basement. So it, it'll all be one pour, I would have think, that uh, that foundation work for the office and for the uh, accessory apartment. And the works are going to just wouldn't make sense to have you know the contractor do one building and then come back uh, two weeks later to start the next building get it all done at once that's that's my way of thinking and again it's there's something in the bylaws that maybe have to be tightened up if if the town is concerned about this in future applications yeah well, we've been through this in two separate meetings, and the same questions came up in both, both of those meetings. And before that, we had a number of other accessory apartments, and that was brought up also. So, to be clear, I think it needs to go back, and somebody needs to do something. We don't do that. That's CPDC. <coughs> Yeah, I agree so far. I think if the uh, certified plot plan has this, the sufficient square footage and the architectural drawings have the sufficient square footage, then I don't personally see a reason for a waiver. Okay. Uh, Kyle? I, I'm in conformance with that. I don't have any uh, further notes to add to it. Okay. Um, then I will accept a motion. I'll make one. Okay. I'll move to grant the petitioners Sunry <coughs> and Krista Reese a special permit under zoning bylaw sections 532, 547, and 732 to construct a one story office addition and a one story accessory apartment addition to an existing single family dwelling on the property located at 29 Holly Street in Reading. In accordance with lot plan of land dated April 16, 19, uh, 2019, prepared and certified by Edward J. Farrell in Woburn, Massachusetts, and also architectural drawings A1-1, A1-2, A2-1, and A2-2, all dated April 12, 2019, prepared by McKenzie Engineering Company in Leominster, Massachusetts. And again, the same conditions apply to this construction. And I'll just repeat them again, even though you've heard them already. The petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and the proposed foundation plan prior to the issuance of a foundation permit. <coughs> So then submit to the building inspector final construction plans for the proposed structure along with the as-built foundation plan for that structure prior to the issuance of the building permit. And the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector as-built plans of the new structure prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Do you want to <coughs> separate that slightly and put special permit under 732 for the office and the rest of it under 754 um, 547 and 532 for the accessory apartment we can do that if that makes everyone feel more comfortable <laughs> okay. we're, we're given the whole thing mm. uh, you, you just vote separately on, on, on the two <coughs> portions of it that's fine it's okay. Um, do we have a second to that? Second. Second. <coughs> Any other discussion? No other discussion. All, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Um, four. Four to one. I'm abstain. I'm not abstaining. Okay. I'm voting on the negative uh, until this gets cleared up. However, you only need four of the five votes to move forward. So you are 
been granted both we have we have voted so you will have we will have 14 days to write that up um, it goes to you but it also goes to the town clerk town clerk takes it and from the time it gets stamped in this 20-day appeal period on after that 20-day appeal period you can come in to the building commissioner you just I won't tell you what you should or shouldn't do if you want to come in to see the building inspector <laughs> commissioner ahead of time. That's fine. That's between you and the building commissioner. <laughs> so, uh, again, I'll need a clean set. Here's your idea. No, you can write it. Well, I'm writing it. That's right. Maybe, maybe, I can't. Can't. <laughs> maybe, he, maybe he isn't. Here's the architecture. Okay. Is, um, I can't do case before the board this evening. Um, Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the select, select board's meeting room, Town Hall, uh, 16 Low Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, June 19th, 2019, at 7 p.m. on the application of Wade and Lorraine Woolworth, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 9. The modifications of the special permit granting granted in case 11-11 11, uh, for new special permit under granting zoning bylaws section 7.3.2 to convert a storage area above the garage to a master bedroom with three-quarter bath um, to the existing single-family dwelling at the property located at 26 Green Street, Reading Mass. Um, Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified. Um, <coughs> as were the select board, the town clerk, the police department, fire department, the building department, conservation commission, health department, the sister's office, engineering division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you think you may wish to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. Now, again, it doesn't hurt to be sworn in, and if you think you may wish to speak, stand. Uh, do you swear that the testimony given before the board this evening uh, is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. 
Um, this is a request for a, a modification. Um, <coughs> Modification of a special permit that was granted um, in case 11 11. Uh, maybe it didn't fit our package here. <coughs> July 7th, July 7th of 2011. Uh, under uh, section uh, bylaw 732, uh, to convert the storage area above the garage. Um, whoever is presenting tonight, um, I will give you the floor. You can explain to the board what you wish to do and why you wish to do it. Do um, yeah, you can come up. I mean, we, we don't buy, we, we can't throw much. <laughs> you want to stand beside this? If you want to stand, we're really loud, so it's good. Um, we, I put a letter in there. That, um, going over it. So eight years ago, you gave us a special permit to build a garage onto the house. Um, upstairs, I wanted a decent storage area because I used to, my basement was kind of yucky. Anyways, um, we have a great open deck. There's a picture of, of the house in your packet. Um, but with the building going up, 10, 12, feet behind our house um, on Gold Street, there's going to be three more stories above us looking down at us on that deck. So we met with Glenn and uh, Asked him if we could build a roof on the deck to enclose it into a three and four season porch, and he said yes. With that came the idea of using the room above the garage because now it would be connected to the house. Um, it's a great space. My children are now home from college, adults and working. And um, my son actually came up with the idea because he wanted that space as his bedroom, and, and I said, forget that. Give him our bedroom because it would be better than our bedroom. Um, it makes a lot of sense, the flow of the house. Um, so uh, eight years ago when we did it we didn't need the extra space and um, it was on our plans as storage and you guys said at the meeting because I, I watched it on TV uh, a couple of weeks ago you guys said you didn't want it to become uh, an accessory apartment which of course it didn't because my mother was on the first floor so um, we just want to use the space in the house it's, it's an awesome just a room above the garage, but now we connected by a porch right to our kitchen. So my husband has bad knees from his work, and so when we're a little older, it will be kind of nice not going up that third set of stairs to our bedroom. And so uh, Glenn said it would be an amendment. So of course we didn't even get around to the plans for another few months, um, and then Mark suggested that we do an amendment, and we also do a special permit application just in case there was a problem with the amendment. So it's not really up, uh, actually the outside of the house will look better, I think. With well, it doesn't matter. But um, the roof over the porch, just continuing the roof, is not part of the special permit. That's just the building permit. Um, so basically, we just want to use that space as living space instead of all uh, that junk. That's John, I have some issues with this uh, application line. We do have a letter from the, uh, the building commissioner, uh, which is Mark, uh, <coughs> Mark Dupel. Um, dear board members, with regards to the above mentioned hearing, I offer the following information. Uh, it requires a minimum modification to the previously granted special permit. Um, if the board moves forward on it. Um, we'll start with Eric this time. Back and forth. Um, I don't know. I mean, it seems like you're only here because back in 2011, uh, the board put a condition on the special permit that you got then not to be able to do anything other than storage there, and that's what you're looking to modify now. I was not on the board back then, nor 
did I look at the video from 2011, but I think, I think that if I take your point that the aesthetics of the building might be improved with, you know, extending it all the way across, I, I think that the Four Season porch looks great, and I don't see anything in your application that would prevent me from supporting the conversion of that storage area to living space, but again, not being here in 2011, I'll, I'll just throw those comments in and wait to see what the other members that were here think. I was here. Yeah. <laughs> I, saw the, I saw the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to remember, but my God. Uh, <laughs> the only comment I would make is I, I've driven by that property a million times. It's a good looking piece of property. Thank you. You've done Thank a wonderful you. job, okay? Thank you. And, and <laughs> as far as the converting the storage to a bedroom, uh, you're not even going to notice anything from the outside. Right. It's going to look like it looks. Right. And, uh, and it's not going to be an accessory apartment. Right. And uh, I'm closing that, that, that pitch line and closing that porch right now, I think is going to add to the appeal of the house. Yeah. I, I find it really okay. Okay, uh, again, uh, yeah, uh, I, I would agree with the board members you've heard. You've done a great job with the uh, lot and the space you have yourself there. I, and, and, you know, I, what you have proposed I think will look great and everything else. The issue I have with it is the zone you're in. You're in a B business to B. business B, right? Yeah. yeah. Which allows no residential. I'm, but I'm, Excuse me. No, no, we all live in business B. It does allow residential, but if my house were to like, we ripped it down, we would not, we wouldn't be able to build a home. Right, your grandfather in there. Right. You were there. My house was built in 1890. Right. I believe that is why. Uh, oh, and maybe that was one of the reasons why you could not expand your living space. No, over, no, it was absolutely not. I watched the meeting, and at the very end of the meeting. Um, my architect had drawn storage because we really weren't looking for more living space. My children were younger. Um, you guys, <laughs> both of you said, okay, let's just make sure it says storage just in case there's not a third family dwelling there. You know how often we have, yeah. and you guys said, you know how often we get that some, okay. all of a sudden a two family becomes a three family. So we were like, whatever. Those concerns, yeah. But that was it. That was the only sentence. That's why I put it in there. I wanted to make sure you could pull it up online and look at it. And then the meet, and then for me, granted the permit. It was pretty long too. I mean, we went over everything. But um, when Glenn was there, and also I did a lot of time with Mark and Kristen. I mean, I, well, yeah, I'm there's, no, there's no reason why business B wouldn't allow me to use another room in my house. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? The reason, I'm totally uh, what I'm looking at now, num number one, and, and, and I, I can see why the building inspector probably told you you did not need a certified plot plan. You were asking in your application for a modification to a previous special permit. Would have been nice maybe to have that plot plan from the previous special permit. We always like to have a plot it plan. Off and they said no. And I yeah, well, I, I, I have an issue with many times with the building inspector telling people they don't require a plot plan. But we're not, um, the bylaws, I have, but I do have one. The bylaws are, are, are emphatic that yes, one. you must submit a plot plan with your application. Period. If I have one with me. Can I give it to you now? Okay. And number two, I look at this as being an expansion of a non-conforming use. Non-conforming being it's a residential structure in a non in a business district which is non-conforming for residences and you're expanding that use I believe they may require a variance uh, I look to other board members maybe you have different opinions different arguments on that but that's the way I'm looking at it is an expansion of a non-conforming use and I think that would require a variance well, when, when we went through this process the yeah. first time, there was a lot of debate between, and Glenn was actually at the meeting, between all this, you know, residential in a business B, and, you know, I, I'm a plumber. I have no idea what that means because that's all 
uh, the way the town has changed the zoning, but it's a residential street. We got a building permit to build a house, so I don't know why why business B always comes up with. I, I believe I think it was you and John the last time of, of the legalities behind it. I don't I don't know. Well, you you were you I believe you were grandfathered to build that house. Now, did you demolish the previous oh, house? No. No, 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 no. So you just you refurbished it. That house has been there since 1890. Yeah. That's why it your grandfather. Exactly the same. Yeah. But now, because it's a business B. It was a business B eight years ago too. Yes. And that's maybe why you couldn't expand upon that. You no. can and you no. can have the primary house, that yeah. fame yeah. footprint and everything else, but you can't expand the residential use. At the time when we did the special permit, I didn't even it didn't dawn on me that it was noted as storage. Yeah, mm. we could have asked for the living, and they would if, have granted. If the architect it, but we were like, put, no, could have asked for it, but it doesn't mean it would bring. Granted but if the architect right. had put study or office or yeah. whatever, I don't know if the if, if it would have changed anything. So I don't know either. It was such a small yeah. little take. In but the, 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 these are issues. These are two issues that I saw when I went through. <coughs> now, as they say, like the other members. What you have there today is existing. You've done a wonderful job there. It, it, I think it's a, a, a great uh, house on Green Street. I think it stands out as being a uh, outstanding piece of property there. Thanks. Uh, Many amazing uh, neighbors. But, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, but, it, you know, you, we, we, when we sit on the board here, it's basically you have to go by the bylaws. You, know, you have to cross your T's, dot your I's. And, and that's when I looked at this and I said, hmm, number one, should this have been advertised as a variance? And number two, if so, we should have a plot plan on this. We would, that would be ideal. I, I would like to see this I'm, and how we have other properties. And, I might actually have one. Well, like yeah, but right now I'm not going to look at it. No. So when, when we were making our, doing our homework basically on right. this, it uh, would have been great to see I that. did ask specifically at yeah. the building department office, so I'm, I'm really bummed that I didn't because it, so it takes a lot to put these packets together. Mm. It's not easy. I mean, but, okay, so so that's that's the two of the issues that I saw okay. with it and, you know. Well, I as chair always come last. I want to hear what everybody has to right. say. I don't want to temper it. However, I was one of the people <laughs> that sat that uh, 2011 decision yeah. in, in that board. So I will pipe in only because um, it's appropriate to, to jump in at this particular time. Um, I have the same reservations as Robert did. Uh, the, the, the issue is if we had the plot plan uh, before us, the amount of area that you have the built upon is a question. 25% is in the residential area. Uh, that, because it's attached to the house, becomes part of, of that calculation. When you put the garage in and you put something over it for storage, the board, I believe, had that been for a living space, it would have turned you down or made you go for a variance at that particular time. But it wasn't advertised for a variance, so we could not hear it as a variance. And I cannot remember if you said, well, leave it as storage so we can get this through and build a garage. I, I, I cannot. I actually have a copy of it on my phone if you want to watch the video. I know you don't, but I'm just saying that I was really crossing every T and dotting every Well, you, you saw it was a four to one vote in favor. I was the dissenting vote. Exactly. Yep. No, on that night, no, you all agreed. No, it was four to one. Did you watch the yeah. video? <laughs> in fact, it's oh, right it in the decision. I think we got the okay. decision in our packet. Yes. Yeah, you definitely do. That's why I said storage. Right. We went through the whole wording of it, and I made it sure. Dissenting vote. Yes. Yeah. And that was the dissenting vote. Okay. And, yeah. and, and, and the reason, again, is that in my mind that night, uh, you're increasing the living area just like right now you're asking for a deck to be converted to a four-story you're a plumber you're going to insulate that and you're going to put heated and I if you could using it for a four, 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 four season. season facility you're increasing the amount of living space in that in that area whether or not we we give you this and in your petition 
that you're requesting tonight, it's a conversion, but it's not really discussed at all, your conversion of a deck to a four season porch, which is again, a continuation or an expansion of the, of the living area that you have. So the concern that I have is exactly where, and the board does not talk, talk amongst itself ever, ever, ever. Um, so I came, I came in with the same thoughts that Bob did at, at the present time, uh, but we have not conferred. And I still have that concern. And I have one other concern too, and I, I will make that uh, a question to you. Do um, you know what's above the uh, garage now? What is the ceiling height of that storage area? Seven, it's nothing in the plan. Oh. This, there's nothing there. I mean, that's why we asked for that. You can't yeah. use it as residential unless it's 7-3. Oh, it's used to my right. Oh, it's high. Yeah, it's high enough, it's but I don't know what the actual measurement is. It's definitely not 7-3. It's too well, tall. So, I was, I was going to interrupt you, but wouldn't the deck space and the storage space already be calculated in the actual space when we did the original <coughs> building permit? No. Because deck space is considered living space, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's not. No. Oh, no, okay. It's not. I think it's Glenn that said four seasons, but I just wanted it to be a three season porch. I didn't want heat out there. I wanted it to still feel like we had a porch just with a roof because the people now will be well, watching us. But it says uh, yeah. in your... It did because Glenn... Um, advisory well, so he's like oh well, but, you know I mean it's fine but how do I go what do we do next to even do this I, mean, I, I really my main concern is doing <coughs> porch so we can use that so we're not being um, stared at basically and I can see exactly three what, seasons or two seasons. I can see exactly what you're trying to do I have no problems with right. what you're trying to do but the zoning laws as Robert said they're very specific about what you can and can't do. Variances versus special permits. Variances are very difficult to begin with uh, because the bylaw differentiates uh, business B uh, and its residential use, what you can do and what can, can be there. As you said, prior to 42, you had the house built in 1890. Um, of course, that, that beat 1942, but uh, up until that time, there was nothing else done. So the question of the, what existed there beforehand, before you came in in 2011, I'd go back to the board. You know, you can't contact these people after the hearing, and uh, it's too far back. But the point is that you look at it because you're coming in and a asking for an expansion of the living space by converting the storage area and by creating that, through, whether it's a three or four story, is it going to be used for residential use? And the answer is, of course it is. It's a residential house. Yeah. Correct. But the zoning bylaws is not. <laughs> but it's part uh, but of a single see, family where, the dwelling. La the it's last time that's where I was getting so frustrated. <laughs> it's a residential house. It's in your business B. Like the town so, threw that upon us. It's very frustrating in my yeah. And, and you, you're welcome to live in that residential house. You're right. just not welcome <laughs> to expand it at your desire. Yeah. You must get yeah. approvals to expand well, it. When I lived on Pearl Street, I could. I Maybe. I, I, I don't know where you live on Pearl so Street. Well, that, that's, that's There's I mean, many sections in town that, that you can do it, especially yeah. if it's a residential area. Yeah, yeah. you're allowed so, by right. Correct. Okay, but... So then, but what would we? Well, I want to hold okay. that. Okay. I yeah. want to get through you what the other board members yeah. feel, and then we'll talk about where we go from here. Nick, I definitely see the merits of uh, what the chair and Robert are saying, um, but then I go back to look, like for example, you're looking at the use in the structure, and making sure every applicant that presents the case isn't proposing something that's detrimental to the neighborhood. What you're doing with the structure, I don't see that being detrimental at all. Like, no one would even really realize it. As far as the use, I, I get that you are increasing the resi residential use. You are adding a bedroom. And with that comes more demand for parking um, and, you know, demands in the neighborhood, so to say. 
think so. Uh, plenty of practice. So, so, yeah, so maybe, are, you, are you getting one more bedroom out of this application? Yeah. Yes. But okay. The, All right. So maybe not house. your family. If yeah. the next family, they have one more bedroom, they can fit one yeah. more adult. Okay. But we do have incredible off-street parking. We have parking for nine cars on, on our, in our lot, which is more than anybody else on street. That's great. But, but, <laughs> so, so with <laughs> all that said, Every, every case is, is like a snowflake. It's all every case is unique. You're a residential home in a business district, and to me, I mean, I'm, I'm for following the process in the, in the zoning board, but I'm really on, I'm on the fence. Um, probably leaning more towards not having a problem with it. <laughs> not having a problem. Not having a problem with it. Okay. I have to wait. I'm not. I'm gonna do what the rest of the board members say. Okay. Um, just looking at your watch and the parking spaces, um, your neighbors must be jealous. They are. Uh, I would say for one, the documentation is a little bit thin. Um, you must have a very high ceiling in the storage, or you have a low ceiling when you put the roof on the deck in order to come across. These, these, these are steps at the door stepping down, is that correct? Yeah. In the proposed drawing? Yeah. Stairs down. Uh, so if you have enough head clearance in the deck with the given roof line, then there's going to be ample height in that storage room. It must be already existing well over seven feet. It must be more like ten. Well, you have a full um, one glass door. Right. It's, it's a full seven foot, foot or a six foot eight sliding glass yeah. door. So, yeah, it's so it's full, actually got to be eight feet plus. There's no question right? about that. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you've currently always walked outside across the deck. Is there any impact to the third floor of the existing? You know, well, the roof line will come over right below the third floor windows. It's just a natural So the roof extension. line will kind of it just fits in between. It fits between the two windows. It must be above the sill line. Yep. But not hitting yeah, that window. Shed dormer roof. Yeah. We'll continue we'll across. We'll go right into that. I don't know why we didn't do it in the, in the beginning because all he does is shovel the snow off of that deck and we're... Fair enough. You know, it's, um, it's so the existing garage and storage room to be converted to bedroom roof will not, not be modified. Um, and also the front entrance porch breezeway roof will not be modified either. Just bring that point up because the architectural drawings are a little difficult to read. They're not as correct to represent the actual building. Bring that up with your architect. Um, I think that you're in a difficult situation where you are in a lot B. You're not really increasing the square footage of the building, uh, given that the deck is part of square footage, but it's the livable space as noted versus building square footage. Uh, the rear steps is staying the same. It's an existing staircase off the back of that deck. Yeah, we um, they're old, but we got the permit eight years ago to just rebuild them as is with Glenn. And mm -hmm. For life, yeah, the safety issues and keeping that, right. you know, refurbished yeah. and stuff. So add anything else to the house? I think there's merit in understanding that it's a four season room because to not properly build it with the insulation and the yeah. new walls that will be in the roof will be added. You're losing a lot of energy because there will be right. movement back and forth through the building. Uh, so I think that as you move forward with a building permit, should we agree to proceed in that direction? Uh, it, any addition should be abiding to uh, the energy code requirements of the town for a four season. It's a really efficient house, the way he insulated and did all So you want to maintain that efficiency and see it as a four season, which is understandable. Um, and those are my comments and clarifications that I wanted to put forth. Uh, I'm not sure where I can stand on the issue of Zone B and expanding living area. Uh, I personally don't have an issue <coughs> with it. I think that densification in the downtown area is appropriate. That's a, that's a planning department issue as well. Uh, so I wouldn't really have any objection to your So. Um, the board having gone through this and you making a presentation, um, the next uh, portion of the hearing is open it up to a public comment. So at this point I will open. Before you do that. Yes. One other, ob other observation I would make, and I'm not sure whether it means the same thing or not, but they're asking for a modification to a, uh, to a 
board approval that was made eight years ago. Yeah. And that approval before was made in accordance with section 6332 of the bylaws, which no longer exists. Okay, so do you modify something that no longer exists in terms of the bylaw? No, that's when we're going to get to the next to something else. We need, okay, so that's a, just another not a solution. Throw in. Where do we go from here? Is I'm going to say yeah. that, but I, I want to get I, through. I don't see anybody on the board disagreeing with what you're doing in terms of common sense. It, make, it yeah. makes sense to do that. Okay, the question is, how do we get there? Okay. <laughs> well, we're not ready for that yet. So, go ahead. <laughs> yes, please stand and give us your name and address. Hi, I'm Heather McLean. I live at 20 Green Street. I'm a direct abutter to the um, mentioned storage space. It overlooks my side yard. Um, I'm here in support of Wayne and Lorraine. Oh, Lorraine, sorry. <laughs> I'm just combining their names. Um, and um, they're great neighbors. I think that the proposed um, changes to the structure will be welcome in the neighborhood. Um, uh, I don't have any problem with parking. Um, uh, I, I mean, we're getting a four-story apartment building behind us. I think if we want to talk about parking and density, then that's probably a much better conversation to have. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say. And I have to get back to another meeting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I'm Pamela Adrian. I'm also in a butter up a uh, corner of Ash and Green, and I uh, was also a spokesperson for the Alliance when the huge building that's going to be going up at the rear of their property is going in there and was concerned about their privacy with that building going in. So I think the enhancements that they have suggested for this building for their own privacy's sake to enhance the neighborhood, to enhance their property, are certainly welcomed. Okay, thank you for your comment. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Yeah, okay, I'll talk Sarah Brucolacchio. I own 28 Green Street, directly next to them. And I just want to say that, when was it, 20 years ago when you guys moved in? Uh, 27. And they totally <laughs> improved the neighborhood single-handedly when they really invested in their house. They're a wonderful family. And, oh, um, <laughs> and uh, I just feel that... Um, for them, I totally understand why they need to do this because they have a complete loss of privacy because of the structure that went in behind them. So I guess I would say that if anybody was on the fence about this, I would, you know, I could see how uh, this really shows how we take care of our own hair in Reading and see that, I mean, we want them to stay. I was afraid they were going to move because it was, they really are losing <laughs> the most privacy of anybody. We're not moving. <laughs> yes. Yeah, down the street, 32 Green Street. I've been on the Lorraine and Wade, I don't know, for about 25 years, and I know their children. Uh, we've been around, have never been in trouble. They graduated, both of them have gone through college. Great kids. Um, I really can't say enough about them. They're a plus to our neighborhood. Love them both. <coughs> um, that's about it for now. I, I can't talk. I, I can't bring them up. You know, she's just, they're just great people. <laughs> This is the mayor of Green Street. The mayor. That's the mayor. <laughs> I got two years left. <laughs> uh, I don't see anybody else who is interested in making a comment. Uh, so I'll close the subject matter of the public hearing at this point, and I'll move it back to the board. Uh, now I think we need to address where do we go from here. And I think... Um, It's just one member of the board. I believe that right now we have a predicament in that we can't even, we cannot even modify the existing um, special permit that was granted under uh, 6332 because it doesn't exist, at least today. Um, so I think we need to look at um, options that we would go forward on this. And because I think at least one or maybe two members of the board consider this is not a special permit, but as a variance, um, do we need to seek some direction for moving forward on this? Um, I would suggest that we, you have three options. Number one, you can move and request the board to make a decision this evening. I think you, th you can see the board is somewhat split on this. 
you need four out of five. Number two, you could ask for a withdrawal without prejudice, uh, which would mean you have to start all over again. Number three, you could ask for a continuance so that maybe we can sort this a little bit out uh, with town staff and maybe town council as to where we should go with situations such as this. Uh, because we would be seeking uh, legal, uh, town's legal representation of how to proceed. As for the issue of the four story building behind you, uh, this is not this board's doing. We can't do anything about that. Uh, we, I, to tell you the truth, I, I wasn't even, when you mentioned that in here, I wasn't even looking at where that was coming from, but I know where it is. Um, but we don't have the culprit here. So well, the, 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 the point is, <clears throat> but the, the point is, in, in a situation such as this, um, personally, I would recommend that you seek a continuance so that we can sort this out. Rather, uh, but I can't tell you what to do. So I feel like sending it to town council is a waste of the town's money. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know what you're saying. So we either. We either roll the dice tonight, have you vote on it. I'm so tired. And if it fails, you got to start all over. Or ah. Get it. No. no. no, no, no. What if it fails, right, yeah. fails, you don't have a chance You can't do this again. again. Right. Well, because, right. it's a, because it's a special permit, you could come back again. However, it would have to be a substantial change in what you're coming back for. Okay. If it were a variance and you, and you were knocked down, you'd have to wait two years to come back. So, if you were moving forward, you want, I would think, yes, it's going to cost the town, but that's what we employ a town council to do. So, you'd want to get his interpretation before you move forward, unless you want to roll the dice. Oh, I feel like I'm on a game tonight. show. <laughs> um. So, could we add the plot plan to the package? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so yep. we'll do <coughs> measurements we'll, of the space. We'll go, the we'll go for um, the uh, no, C. Yeah, the I'm not a gambler, so <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll go with C. Yeah. Um, so good that's my, my special permit that we did put together, because we put together an amendment, and then Mark yeah. Dupel said you also want to go oh. for a special permit, just in case the amendment doesn't get. So that's all in there, too. So that's just null and void? That's uh, $400? No. <laughs> not, not at all. You you have a special permit in effect right. based on you know a previous bylaw. Right. But then and I applied fine. for a that's whole fine. new special permit as well as I, the amendment. I, I think is. that's what the chair is alluding to that we as as a board or as the town has to get or uh, we're look gonna be looking to get town council opinion in this matter and number one, can in fact the original permit be amended? Can the original so special permit that one. was issued be amended? Because even though that bylaw is out of date, do we go back to that bylaw, which we have records, we can see what that bylaw said, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and modify that? We don't know. That'll be an opinion of the town council. <coughs> and number two, the town council may say no. It's as we said tonight, or myself was one of them, that I think it's a variance is going to be required if we're going to do what you are doing, and you have to bring in your arguments for a variance then and have a plot plan to go along with that. But earlier um, you said it was really hard to get a variance, usually. I'm, I'm not it's more difficult than the special permit, really. But the special I, permit right now is in question because it's modifying a special permit right. that no longer exists in the zoning <coughs> bylaws. So, so you're trying to correct, you're trying to correct a number of things. Um, it, I will tell you, it, it is like rolling the dice, really, because you don't know what you're going to get. This is challengeable, remember, by anybody. It doesn't have to be an immediate abutter. Anybody in be, town can anybody challenge our decision. It could be another board that challenges this board. Mm -hmm. So, and that would tie you up for whatever the litigation is. So I don't think you want to move that direction at this particular time. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, um, I agree with, with Robert 
my concern at the very beginning, and as I said as a chair, I never offer my two cents at the beginning of the, the round robin. It's always the last. But I jumped in only because I was part of that threesome that were on the board when that hearing was done. But the reality is that if we moved, if you request a continuance, we have to do that to a date certain. We cannot just say we're going to continue until we get things together. We have to put a date on that. So if we're going to put a date on that, we'll have to figure out from the board standpoint, your standpoint, how much time do we need to do that? How much time is that typically? <laughs> the next meeting? I would say to get town no, council to... I think our next meeting may be booked already. I don't know. This is what we will check with. The next meeting is July 17th. There's one more slot. It has to be advertised next week. If you could have everything tomorrow, Monday. I don't know. So Can we do it the next meeting? So that's what it, you know, it sounds like. It would go into August then, possibly. Right. Um, so does that mean that that whole packet that I put together, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, I'm really trying to uh, get it together in my head. Uh, we just did the little thing for an amendment, and then we did the other one, just in case the amendment didn't pass for the special permit. Am I modifying that one, or do I have to go and So if you get your all, plan, then you just submit your plan, and you leave all that paperwork there. All that paperwork, so I don't have to give another $190 for that check, but I do no, have to no, do no, no. But I do have to do all the abutters, envelopes. Anything no, you don't even no, have to do that. Oh, I don't have to do that. No, it's a continuance. Well, the continuance, they've <laughs> already been notified. And we're just okay, so I would just... Hearing. So we're just moving this to the next date. Everybody's already notified. They already know. Okay. If they're watching, okay. they'll know it's just they may have to Okay. Be. You just you have to to be. Find it. any additional information you submit. It okay. To so better plans, the plot plan, all that. Measurements. Measurements. Measurements, all of that. Overkill. And then will you put us on that meeting for that next meeting? The next one after that is August 7th. Okay. Can't we do this by July 17th? Whatever you want. Well, well, it has to be done by probably Mondays because it needs to be advertised next week. That's not that much information for us, right? It is. For, it may be for town council with... Um, oh, you guys case. have to see it all. No, no, no. The, 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 the limiting reagent is the town council here. Town council has to weigh in on that. I don't know what the town council's <coughs> vacation plans are. I don't want to cut it short. One week because we'd have to continue the continuance, yeah. and I need that. Yeah, I guess I was worried because nice how many weather cases for do we have? Kristen? Four. Seventeen. For the seventeenth, we have two, but it needs to be advertised next week. So everything has to be reviewed or received and reviewed. If you want town council to review it before then, I don't think that will work. So you have August seventh or August twenty-first, or the next two. They're both wide open. August seventh. Right. Um, so um, Glenn Redmond had said that um, once we did all that, well, no, he said even before we did this, we could go for us for um, no, just no, a building no. permit to do the roof before that. Can we even start that beforehand? Well, it's this nice period of then. this period of time, you yeah. can come in and talk to um, the new building commissioner. Mm -hmm. and Glenn, because they work together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can come in and talk to other staff members, including the town planner. Um, it gives you time to, to do a little research on this also, but it gives, more importantly, so that your rights aren't st stamped on or stepped on, and it gives the town council sufficient time. Um, if this needs to be re-advertised as a variance in his mind, then you have to go through this process again. But I don't know whether that can be tagged on, teched on. I don't know. Normally it's not, but we don't. Town council has to make these decisions. We're not making the decision. And there's a vacation week in there, so yeah, we'll do it in August. Well, I don't know what the, the time frame is. He may take two weeks. I don't know. Okay. All right. We so the continue it again. In the event he doesn't, in continue, if, if the seventh. <laughs> If we're not done by the seventh, we'll you can ask for continuance again. again. Okay. No. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll request that we do the continuance to August seventh, please. Okay. This was uh, originally stamped in when? Mm. Uh, I have the thing here. The first permit, July. Uh, 
right here. I don't know. Can you see it? It's right here, uh, June 22nd. June 22nd, so we should be fine on time. No, wait a minute. I'm sorry. It's 2011. <laughs> no, that doesn't That's work. Reading, I'm reading the old decision. Yeah. <laughs> uh, stamp. Oops, I don't have it here. Yeah. I don't know. Do we have a... Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, May 23rd. You're going to have to put that request in writing. Ruth, did you want to... Oh. As we get through this, you're, if you're going to request that the board continue the subject matter of this hearing until the 7th of July, uh, 7th of August, 2019, you need to put that in writing because of the time that this was stamped in. It was stamped in quite a ways ago. Okay. We got a time limit under Section 40A of. Um, How do we do that? Just Does it need send to an email. email? Can I write? Or can I write a okay. piece of paper. Yeah, you could. Yes. You do that. You can write. It. Yeah. I'll send an email to the student right now on my phone. I got it. It's not a piece of paper. No, he said it's still there. So um, I would, if that, if you're requesting that verbally, we will take that up with this this point. Well, I didn't know if I had to request it or you voted. <coughs> no, no, no. You have to request it, oh, right. but then you have to put the request in writing. Okay, right. doing that right now. Coming okay. out. We do request. Do I hear a motion uh, from the board to continue the subject matter of this hearing until the 7th of August, 2019? I'll make that motion. I'll make the so motion. Moved. Do I hear a second? Second it. Nick seconds. Discussion. Seeing none. All in favor? Five zero zero. <laughs> okay, we're standing adjourned for this evening. Um, you can check back with uh, Mark is on vacation right now. Uh, Glenn is, I believe, here. Uh, but uh, Mark is the uh, the one whose name has got to be on it. He's the new commissioner. Okay. Okay. Um, so you're free until. But you can come in and do whatever you want with staff, which I'd recommend. And, and the board, uh, through Kristen, will ask. Uh, uh, it has to be done by um, town, uh, town council has to be requested by the ZBA through the planner or the manager or the assistant manager. Okay. So okay. Kristen will take that forward uh, tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Well, that's what we're going to do at the end. No, we could do it right now. Krista, would you um, talk with Andrew and or um, Jean on the board's request? And correct me if I'm wrong. Board's request to ask town council on this particular hearing number one. We have a modification <coughs> on a non-existent bylaw that was removed from the zoning bylaws. Uh, and a petition granted in 2011. That's number one. Number two, uh, the sub <coughs> subject matter of the actual request uh, is it properly? Um, put forward under a special permit or do we need for expansion of living quarters uh, to go to, to, towards a value? And number three, um, do we need to re-advertise? Should the answer to the previous question be yes? Do we need to re-advertise or can we um, piggyback onto what is existing right now? Can we modify? We have, I think, one other case at his request, I, I, at his decision, at his request, our decision. Does that seem to be appropriate? Mm -hmm. so, can we also ask the standard for granting the modification for the special permit? So I'm not sure what that is. Like, what, like, if we want to do yes, 
Like, is there any sort of like criteria we need to go through, or like weighing of things? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. yeah. Uh, Why don't we well, put that as question one. number four? Well, we have, but they're always been on 40 Bs. Right. No, exactly. Oh, yeah. That, well, that's not and a specific of a special permit. That's yes. Yeah. The thing that bothered me though is that uh, you go back to what we did in 2011, okay, where they put on a significant modification. That was for, uh, remember, that was for accessory. That was not for living space. That was for a garage with storage in there. That was right. not for living space. The modification. This is the mod what is the standard that we use to make that decision? That's what that was for. It wasn't for living. It was, yeah. And basically, that's the way it was. A garage. They wanted a garage. With storage above. With storage right. above. Didn't they do other modifications? They added other things to the main structure in addition to the garage storage and the deck? Did they, they modify the main structure? I think they in a business they, they, they maybe did, but... We did it with a permit. Yeah. I think it was no just issued a straight permit, building permit. But they were allowed to do it. They were grandfathered. Okay. They didn't expand. The house itself. The house was itself. Yeah, the house itself. They that didn't come before us. It no, it right. never did. Okay. Wait a minute, I have a separate question. Since I'm on CPDC, may I get meeting minutes for this meeting that address the accessory apartment? Uh, you all talked about accessory apartment issues. I'd like yeah. to make sure that there, those points of order are taken in consideration as part of the CPDC board, which is what I'm on. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So, mm -hmm. may I add a copy of them? Actually, uh, the, the person who was on your board who was here for the last time that question was brought out was Nick. Was Nick? Well, he's Nick. no longer chairman. No, no, no. no, no. But he's but still sitting on the board? Yes, he is. So? So he gets a copy, or... He, John, yeah, we, we, can, we can get the copy to CPDC. Okay. When they're done. Yeah. When they're done, yeah. I was going to give you my email address. Um, okay. Even though Gene has it. No. last hearing this evening uh, is a continuation. Uh, is a continuation on a continuation on a continuation. <laughs> so please come forward. That was a complicated uh, issue. So the um, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, will hold a, a continued public hearing on the, in the um, Select Board's meeting room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass, uh, on the 19th of uh, June 2019, on request for uh, application of Patrick Hunt, pursuant to Mass. Uh, Mass General Laws 40A, Section 10, for variance on the Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 7.4 and 8.6, Table of Signs, permitted by the, within the Zoning District of Business A, as determined by the Zoning Board to additional signage on the property located at 357 Main Street, Lot 17, Lot 23. And this was continued um, last session was the 15th of May. So, um, where do we stand right now? Well, as you remember, we were for the board to request several wall signs at the Burger King property. And after thorough discussion with the board and some comments from the abutters, 
um, we have revised the proposal to ask the board to consider only one wall sign. So it would be an addition. So it would be two total signs on the property where one is allowed. Uh, but they'd like to put a four square foot lo a four foot logo, which would equal 16 square foot, on the side elevation above the door that's considered their main entrance. Do you have this written down? Into. Do you have a plan in, to show us? Oh, did he, Mark didn't show them? Well, we've got nothing. Oh, nothing? No. Oh, I'm sorry. There's nothing there. I, thought, I provided it. Mark, but. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thought you would have it. So, you're. What you're doing is you're modifying the original request. Correct. Um, so the freestanding sign, as I understand it, stays the same. Correct. Uh, and then instead of the changes that you requested initially, you're modifying that? Revising it to only request one wall sign on the building. Which is the Burger King logo. Logo. Up above the, the front door. Correct. Okay. Of the main entrance, which is really, if you're looking at the building from the main street, main street. it's the right side elevation mm -hmm. that faces the parking area in the stores. Okay. But that doorway is considered mm -hmm. the main entrance to the building. Okay, so the other wall signs that you requested have not you withdrawing that. Correct. So we're talking about one wall street, a uh, one wall sign Correct. on the main street side. This and the width logo and the square footage on that is? 16. No, it's not on the main street. It's on the side elevation. It's on the parking lot side. Correct. Correct. On the right yeah. side the facing right south. Side elevation. So it's not the main street. It's facing the parking lot. No, it's not the main street. No. It's, it's facing the, the side lot. lot. This is the D space in the parking lot. The main street's over here on this side. This is facing the parking lot. Okay. Where we know strip Gotcha. Right there. Okay. Yeah. How big is that space above the doorway? This is, this is 12.56 square feet, right? Circular sign? It's circular, but if you measure, it's a four foot height. So if you take a full rectangle measurement, it's 16. Rectangle. Right, if it were a rectangle, but it's, right. it's, it's not a rectangle. No, no. Okay. So its, di it's diameter is four feet. Correct. Yeah. So we use the formula for the, for the circle or? Well, I took the bigger measurement as the rectangle. Some here. Is that pi, pi D o, divided pi by D. two. Yeah. Divided by two. John, it's right here. Twelve point five six square feet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I didn't see. <laughs> or it could I be didn't. pi R squared. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> um, I believe there's some measurements on that plan. You asked the measurement. I think I gave you all my drawings. So. In regard to. Can I I <laughs> mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, it is pi r squared. Yes, it's it's pi r squared. four yeah. times three point yep. one five. Oh, it doesn't show the full height of that. Um, they should be in there. Now, will this this be a lit sign? It is internally illuminated, and I just wanted to confirm also if it needs to be opaque as the ground sign needs to be opaque. So it will be. So the graphics um, will only come through. <coughs> The white will be opaque, and the light will come through the graphics only. So one more time, the light is going to only come through the, the graphic itself, the light shines not the white the, correct. background. Correct. And when the ground sign is repaired, when the face are repaired in the ground sign, the ground sign will also be opaque. Are the entrances to all the other sides lit? The entrances to the restaurant, are they all lit? Lit how? So go, I assume they have a light that goes this over, the, the, over the entrance way of all the access, yeah, all the entries. So the building lighting, right, yeah. at the entrances. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, that's required by building inspector okay. for safety purposes. Yeah. We're only dealing with the sign. But.
Okay, that's uh, substantially different than what the original request right. was. And that's what I was just looking at. Mm -hmm. The arguments in favor of a variance, and the first one certainly a different now for just a single sign. And you, that hasn't been updated, has it? Which one? The original uh, standalone sign? Variance criteria. Right. Well, this is the only wall sign, right? Yes. And uh, uh, in the bylaw for the signage, they can have one wall sign? No. no. The Just site is only allowed sign. one sign. Oh. It's a business day. <clears throat> so the site is only allowed one sign. It's one sign, about 50 square feet. It's freestanding. And that's already exceeded. Yeah. But that's grandfathered. Yep. Yeah. And they are allowed no wall signs. Well, I checked into this, um, and apparently, going way back, CPDC was involved in this, and um, the latest meeting you had with CPDC, um, they uh, refused any signage on the building itself, uh, but allowing the existing freestanding sign. Now, before that, be prior to construction, I found out that you were permitted a number of wall signs That's plus. So we get into a, a litigation issue again because construction cannot, if you stop for construction, uh, that does not cut off your well, uh, previously, previously granted to you. Now the question is, how far can you go back and what are the documents doing that? We can't seem to find some of the documents. So um, I think rather than, personally, I think rather than continue this to go forward, uh, I think granting the freestanding sign is a, to me, a no, non-brainer. Um, it doesn't mean that we're changing anything that was not, uh, even in today's, I think it was two years ago, that, which was it two years ago before construction started, to before CPDC because of that. Well, they were before for the building, you went before? Reconstruction. Yeah, in two, 2016. Okay, um, when that was done, there was no not a question on the freestanding sign. Right, that's, right. that's, so, that's not been requested. Right. That's not advertised to be in the variance or anything. Freestanding signs right. there. It's yes. going to stay. Right. Yes. Right. Now, the wall signs uh, that were given to you come before you took over uh, were still there. The question of enforcement or lack of enforcement or whatever is still there and the, I, I don't know where where town council would be involved in that situation but I'd like to see, see that or we move we would, we would to move forward and grant which is our option to move forward and grant the variance or not deny the variance uh, on this one wall sign above the door facing the parking lot um, I think, you know, to let these, these people conduct their, do, their business, we should do, do the latter rather than going back to town council and doing the, all the rest of it. If we deny um, the request um, for this, I mean, they certainly have the option of appealing to our decision anyways, in which case it would go back to town council and end up in court. So. Um, I don't know what the board would like to do. Personally, I don't see the force, the 12.56 12 12 feet on the one logo sign facing the parking lot is a major issue. Um, the bigger issue that I had when you came in, which I didn't even realize, was the red 
fluorescent lights surrounding the building, which I don't know where it's in and where that came from. That got, that was approved, and I have it in the minutes here from the CB from the 2006. Well, they, they did approve that. They did approve it. I would have said just the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the letter. I remember the gentleman. He questioned yes. that, so I asked for the I asked for the decision, and it's right in it's right in here. And they allowed a resolution. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so they were you're just talking about whether to grant a variance on the 12.56. And Mr. Chairman, they also um, discussed the um, the ordinary board in the back. I know that that was a little discussion here last time as well, and that was approved. Well, the, the signage comes with the with the property, uh, and I know that they had to approve that, and yeah. that was done. So at the drive through at the drive through, exactly, the board, drive through yes. as well. You can't have the drive through without a, a menu and a yeah. means of yeah. <laughs> communication. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, what does the board like to do? I... I Nick! <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree that we shouldn't drag this out any further. Um, But I'm a little torn because it would be a variance to grant them that one sign. Um, so the variance criteria still holds up. And well, there was one, two, three, or four signs that didn't really sway me on how you met the criteria. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think I've really changed my mind since mm -hmm. the last time you guys were here. Yeah. So you're of the opinion that we... Yeah, so just to clarify, the, the hardship argument, um, I, I, I'm i not quite sold on it, especially when McDonald's is right there, very similar business and property. Well, I would tend to agree with what Nick said. Uh, I... I can't go with the argument uh, or the hardship issue when I see other buildings having to abide by the sign bylaw on, on that. Uh, and spe specifically, as he says, a competitor down the street that has the one sign and that's it. On the, on the roof there they have it. Uh, I know that the town has allowed before on buildings that abut two streets, 90 degree angles, etc., they will allow a sign on one corner and another sign on the other corner so it can be visible from the other street too. This is a little unique in that it is not on a 90 degree corner, but it is on two streets, but yet the street, the, the sign is not facing the street that it abuts in the back, Ash Street. Uh, so it's, you know, I, I, I can't get the variance criteria squared in my mind that, uh, you know, it doesn't give me anything to hang my hat on there. Yeah. Well, I know that the board takes that very seriously, the, the points of the criteria. Mm. Um, so I understand what you're saying. Sure. I've driven around that building several times. Yeah, and the only street that I come down that I have trouble seeing the standing sign it's coming down Ash Street going toward town. Toward town. Toward town. Mm. It's very hard to see that standing sign unless you're waiting for it when you're coming down the highway because when you get by that parking lot, you can't see it anymore. Right. Uh, but you can see it from any other angle, okay? Uh, I agree with you guys in the sense that addressing the criteria for variance wasn't well done. Uh, and uh, if I were to come, if I were to come back like you did tonight, that's exactly what I would have come back with. Get rid of all the others and put one there. Uh, but it, 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 you haven't justified the real need through the variance criteria. You haven't done it. So yeah. I, I sometimes think when I look at these things <clears throat> that this town has a reputation for not being very business friendly. And I, I see signs of that, evidence of that a lot. And maybe the town needs to think about that a little more. 
but in accord, but per the current bylaws and per the current requirements for variance. Uh, it looks like it's a business unfriendly decision if we have to make it, you know. That's all I have to say. Eric. I think that the challenge I'm having with the prior signage is that it's difficult to determine whether that is like um, like legally or, or, or permitted. Like there's no attending paperwork to it. Mm. I mean maybe, you know, the franchise has copies of it and they you know, if they wanted to press that issue later on, I mean, that, of course, is their right. But it, it, with what we've got, you know, here, it's hard to make the leap that, well, they had it before, so they should have it now, if you can't, you know, point to it being, you know, duly or lawfully um, allowed before. So I think I remember, though, that... Um, Bob had a suggestion that the overage on the freestanding sign, maybe we could carve out a portion of it and as like a compromise, maybe grant the, um, you know, the additional, you know, 12 point whatever amount. And that might, I might be able to make that leap because um, it, it's tough. I mean, it's a building without like a sign on it. And if we're able to, you know, I guess trim from the, oversized allowed sign I guess I could do some sort of maybe mental gymnastics to get to the point where we could have something like on the on the building but I don't think that you can have both I think you need to do something with that original sign in order to get there and I'm, even then I'm still not 100% sure that I'd be on board with that because um, you know it is still a variance that you're asking for and uh, you know you're just kind of I don't know, kind of crafting a way to maybe have something to hang your hat on. But I don't know that with what we've got tonight, it would be enough for me to to get to the point where we could, where I could vote yes for this. Okay. Well, I, I agree with what Eric was just saying. It's a difficult situation, which it's a building with no identity besides the standing sign, which is actually by the driveway parking lot entrance, not even in front of the building. Uh, from an architect's point of view, I'm surprised, I'm an architect, that that wasn't considered from the outset to clarify, or that there had been the four that were granted, which wasn't then validated against what the town bylaws dictate <coughs> for signage. Um, I know you do have on the backside the drive through, which gives some identity on Ash Street to help clarify that from whence you are entering. I don't know if there's any wayfinding entry signs for vehicular traffic that points people in the direction of that. Uh, and if they have the Burger King logo that helps identify that's the way to the drive through versus. So there's no plans for any wayfinding to direct somebody. Um, the building is in operation now. Has there been any problem with any wayfinding through the parking lot? People were, I mean, I haven't tried. Sorry, don't dine there. Yes. There has been problems of wayfinding. <clears throat> so the interesting is part of a hardship is to clarify that as an issue. Uh, way of hardship, and I don't know what the condition is in terms of how people drive through and know where to find the drive through. I have not looked at it from that perspective. Don't know that, although I could see adding at least the one sign that you're recommending, assisting to some degree to facilitate an understanding of where to drive towards to then maybe take the right versus the left to come through. I don't know how you're handling that. Um, but it would seem to me to be part of a case for understanding your hardship. Uh, which would have been wise to have been brought up at this point <coughs> in time. Um, I, I do understand that there's an existing sign adding, and that's the allowance of the site. How we move forward from there, I equally do not know concerning that these are the hardships that everybody else is facing. Uh, that's what I can contribute right now in terms of the factors being weighed here. I think to a degree there's a reasonable compromise of coming down to one sign, but 
given the statute that we have been set. Um, what is the size of the uh, freestanding sign right now? 64. 54? What, including both sides or just one side? Just one side, 8 by 8. Um, well, Bob and Eric both talked about um, perhaps looking at a combination of the two, um, which in my mind may not be inappropriate because that sign outside, is, the freestanding sign has been there for such a long time, perhaps even changing that instead of a square, uh, having a logo inside of a square, you may want to change that, reduce the size of it, incorporate the size of what you want to put on the, the parking lot size. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know the feasibility of changing the sign box there, how, what the cost of that would be to, you know, to alter that sign box in that way, because the manner that they'll change it now is just put new acrylic faces in and they'll update the lighting and they'll spruce it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if they were to take the sign box off in some manner and have to install something smaller, that would probably be a custom sign. I don't know if that's cost prohibitive for them or, or if it just makes more sense just to leave the freestanding sign and not have anything on it. I just, I just don't think it's an easy fix, like an easy option to alter um, the sign box smaller. It's, it's an easier option just to replace it. Well, this is a variance. I know, I know. <laughs> so, let me go to, and I don't even yeah. know how the board would I, I, would react <laughs> to that, but um, three options again. Yeah, yeah. I you understand what the three options are? I do are. understand. I, do. Um, I mean, if you, if you get a negative from the board this evening, you can't come back for two years. However, if you either continue, which is going to yeah. be more time, and have to operate where you're doing it now, or you can withdraw without prejudice. I mean, it's $90 to come back before for whatever reason. Uh, it might be less expensive for you to withdraw yeah. without prejudice, go back and see what you can do, yeah. rather than continue your time, because we're running out of yeah. you run under continuous you run out of times. Time. and. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to get into a situation like that. We, I mean, if we have to go to... Uh, I understand. I understand. Okay, I don't I have understand. to say anymore. Okay. <laughs> um, so we'd like to request for the board to withdraw the application without prejudice. Um, do I have a motion? Do I hear a motion from the board? Accept that. So moved. Do I hear a second? Eric? Second. Eric seconds. Any discussion? No discussion? All in favor? Five right. zero zero. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. It gives you time. We settle the case. Uh, yeah. Well, they need to pursue it anyway. Mm. Okay. <laughs> but should you come back, would you, uh, at a later time, would you get all of your stuff together and give it to the board with enough time to... to with the revision? Mm -hmm. I, I certainly was under the impression that when I sent it, it was being distributed to the board. I don't think any, but anything had re been received on that, that newest uh, modification that you just sent Okay. Out. I'll make a note. I, I will do that. Because okay. I worked on that. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, let me check here. We in the back for It's today's the nineteenth. We had a right. meeting the fifth, right. and it was continued. Right. And then it was just the original meeting. The original meetings. Right. Okay. I thought there were two continuances. 
and we yeah, we should go into one. That's the arrow. Okay. Yeah, so you're you're supposed to draw right past all of this. <coughs> okay, find that. I'll have to show these cards out. Um, do we have anything else before the board this evening? Request and then draw it. 515. Well, 515. <laughs> Do we have any? Do we have any? Yeah. It's this. You guys should have it. We did it the last time, but we did it. We started finishing the landscaping on this. It's literally this right here. That's this. Nope, that's, nope. nope. This is, um, it's not shut down. I haven't seen it. We continued the meeting because of the agenda. The, the, check, the glitch with the website with the agenda. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So yes. minutes, we just have to approve these minutes. Oh. That was, that was. For the last meeting, but the last meeting we didn't do that. So we're seeing with the other minutes. Yeah. Well, um, you want to take a quick peek? I mean, there's like five sentences. I trashed the minutes after. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you, I do remember now. That well, they're supposed to be on the town website, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 64. So that's, that's, that's another question, though. Yeah. Why are yeah. all the decisions? Just leave it in my brain. I mean, the minutes. Yeah. Either one. All the, the, they're not, that the website decision. is not current. I think it's from like January. I think they are. Yeah. Yeah. I've looked at the decisions that we've made. I think they would go back to 17. 2017. Yeah. 16, 15, 14. Paul, no one will make the cut off. Huh? Yes. Uh, there was an extra single page <laughs> on this. The Sai is holding. Drive around. It was at the, it was at the back. It was the last page we had. Of this whole pack? I think it's a whole pack. Okay. Maybe not. What's the date on it? 515. Yeah, 515. It's not yeah, see, uh, see, I didn't have it then. I, cause I, oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, it was up. Okay. Oh, I got up to four. Wow. <laughs> oh, it's good, really. Oh, maybe in this pack. Come on, kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know say it. Nick, you want to see that? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're waiting for that, uh, Hillary, now you've been through, Hillary, right? You've been through two sessions, two Hillary <laughs> sessions. Um, what were your thoughts? I mean, you're like, there's a lot to know. <laughs> I don't have any comments on it. <laughs> <laughs> the back knowledge that everyone has. You know, no, nothing like, that's only because we've had to do it a million times. Yeah. 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 And we were all new. I, we done. <laughs> Fortunately, John has been here on the board for as long as I've been alive. And I know, I've heard. Oh, zoning went into effect in 1942. <laughs> he just knows this stuff. I mean, we not even know. No, no that's not ask true. It. No. <laughs> but I've been around for a long time. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> I must I must tell the board that I'm looking to um, to withdraw um, as soon as we get solidification. And now we keep moving things forward. Now we got another signed bylaw. There are only five of us sitting for it, uh, and that's the. Um, Weston, Weston and Sampson uh, signed. So, okay. And that's not going to be until September the seventh or fourth. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometime. So I'm I'm probably going to stick around until at least that to get that done because I don't want to create another problem for the board. But after that, if everything is okay, I would like to step down. Um, there's things that I'm doing outside of the board just have ramped up too. So. I'm supposed to be getting older and retiring, but I, it seems to be getting the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm telling you ahead of time. So yeah. I'm surprised. There's, there's a little bit of advanced news on my own end. I've picked up a teaching position at the Boston Architectural College, which will require my attention on Monday nights and Thursday nights. Mm. That doesn't start until the end of August, September. Um, so depending on how my time constraint of my evening affairs runs, every other Wednesday or so begins to put 
a burn that I may or may not be able to sustain. Not quite sure just yet. Well, if you can hang on like I'm hanging on, <laughs> uh, we can maybe get some things done and see what, what's going on, but um, <laughs> otherwise we're going to throw Hillary in right. the middle of this. She should be nominated chair just for the fun. Kind of says the board, the right. comedies, they start looking pretty hard to find some more people. They're talking about potentially, well, definitely three. Two anyway, and maybe three. Right. So, so when are you stepping down again? But not until next next, next year. Yeah, it's next year. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So July June thirtieth will be your last day in two thousand twenty. If I so you put that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I hope so. so, so I might worry about the planet. Just, <laughs> just for yeah, information's I mean, sake, goal, we all know where we stand now. Yeah. Okay, as a board. Then the last <laughs> issue before the board this evening is the subject matter of the oh, minutes okay. for um, 5.15. Mm. Um, any motion, uh, any corrections or omissions? Mm -hmm. so I read through it. I didn't have any issues with it. I didn't when I mm -hmm. first got it. Uh, so I'll take a motion to accept these. Uh, minutes of 515. So moved. We have a second. 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 Okay. Third. You got that, Kristen? Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor? So that was 600. Okay. And I did not stick around for the end of when I was watching the other meeting. You approved all the other meetings that have been outstanding? Yes, we all had a couple minutes? corrections, yeah. but uh, we did approve no all of them. Okay. I'll clean out my book here. Maybe I get it to yeah. Okay, that's mine. <laughs> now, um, yeah, I got do, I, do I hear any other motions before the board this evening? Adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> Five zero six zero. Five zero zero. Stumble with all your stuff. I know it. I know it. I got right off the cards. Mm -hmm.